G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an anti-armor prime submachine gun. So, the 45 submachine gun, or the Thompson, is back from Fallout 4. It basically looks the same. I don't think the textures look too much different. I'm noticing that it is a lot more shiny, though, so that's alright. Anyways, so this weapon is interesting, because it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. I remember it sucking back in Fallout 4 quite a lot, but has it been lifted in Fallout 76? We shall see, and with competition like the 10mm submachine gun, I feel like this thing is overlooked. I couldn't even find that much information on it on a wiki or anything, so nobody really gives a shit about this thing. So let's find out whether they should. So we've got the anti-armor legendary effect on this, which is new for Fallout 76. The closest thing we had back in Fallout 4 was a penetrator one, which is only like 30% of target's armor ignored, so anti-armor is quite an upgrade. So. Hopefully this will become of use to us. So starting off at 34 damage, we're using this on an automatic receiver. Prime receiver, so the best damage per bullet we can get. I'm having trouble finding other receivers. I can only find the standard or prime one. We'll get to the attachments a little bit later. Starting off at 34 damage and using Ultrasite 45s. Needed a lot of Cobalt Flux to put that together, but yep, here we go. So let's get ourselves some upgrades, and obviously we're going to chuck some points into Commando because this is an automatic weapon, and some Bloody Must to push up that damage a little bit more. Maybe I could go with 4-Leaf Clover, we'll just have to see how this thing performs in VAT. But at a fire rate of 75, this thing should kind of be like what you'd have a handmade rifle do, so it could be nice and reliable in bats and as well as just real time. Just gotta make sure we get the sneak attack crits, which is obviously what the suppressor is for. Guys, it's basically what you have in Fallout 4, except I've got none of the receivers except for the standard or prime, which is a little bit of a pain. Anyway, so we've got a short light barrel, which is the only upgrade that was on the regular submachine gun back in Fallout 4, and you'll notice that it says it's a light barrel, but it's actually heavier with the barrel. So standard barrel was sitting at 15.05 weight, and it bumps it up to 17.85. So, whoops, looks like this weapon was overlooked by Bethesda, as well as many of the players. A rear core compensating stock, interestingly, weighs less than a short stock, with it all sawn off. So, I don't know, maybe it's using some different wood. We'll go for a large quick eject mag for the best ammo capacity. Interestingly, the quick eject version has less weight than just the large one. I don't know, this this whole weapon upgrade system is kind of weird. And we've gone for a reflex sight here just to help us out with bats a little bit. That's basically what you got from Fallout 4 anyway, so there's nothing really new here. And a suppressor on the end and all of this stuff we've seen before. You can even get that giant muzzle brake hunt, which it looks kind of tacky with. It looks definitely better with a suppressor. Unfortunately, there's no foregrip for it. That'd be really cool if there was, but yep, that's basically what it is. Yeah, comparing this thing to the 10mm submachine gun, with the stand receiver and everything standard, this thing does 63 damage, so <laughs> looks like this thing is a little bit inferior compared to other submachine guns. Okay, let's start off with the muties down at the crevasse dam once again. And right off the bat, I'm pressing the reload button. Yeah, the maximum ammo capacity for this is 62, down from 100, which it originally was back in Fallout 4. So, yeah, a little bit of a nerf there. Hopefully the damage hasn't been nerfed in the same way. So, we'll get started on these super mutants here. Ooh, a three-star legendary warlord. Let's not take this thing all the way to 11 first. Okay, we are getting sneak attack criticals on them, but I think something else is drawing their aggro, because I did hear gunshots going off before. We are in danger now, so we'll just go ahead and get some crit spams and bats going on. Yeah, I'm not sure it's aggroing these guys, but once we get the sneak attack criticals, we should be good to go. We should be getting it right now, but we're not for some reason. I don't know why. Hopefully, this time... Yo, yeah, that's weird. The game's not even notifying me of my extra damage. I'm not sure what's going on here, but hopefully these super mutants will be a little bit more, uh, less immune to my stick attack criticals as I take on the big guy. We'll just hit him up, crit spam him in the face, and that's just to see how much damage we can get. And so far, so good. This thing's performing pretty well, I suppose. We're going to probably have to switch to the basic receiver. Um, halfway through this video because I don't really have enough bullets to keep this thing running with its prime receiver Which is kind of a little bit of a waste of flux, but at this point the damage is kind of good. I'm not actually too um, Unhappy about this so far and I say that probably because there we go There's the sneak attack crits we want we don't want our sneak attack crits infused with lag to make us not get them and have the enemy immediately heal them off But yep looks like we've got this thing running pretty well now, and are we done? 
There's usually a couple other blokes behind. I guess I killed them before. One last check around here. Yep, so if you can actually get this thing working with stealth properly, then you probably be in good hands, but then again, your damage is inferior to a handmade rifle without a prime receiver, just with like a powerful automatic receiver, so it makes this weapon a little bit less appealing. I guess the main appeal about this weapon is the kind of cool um, look about it, because the Thompson is a very cool weapon, I suppose, so we'll go ahead and deal with some more creatures now. Alrighty, so we're going to be taking on the ghouls now. I'll just eat one of those magazines just to give me a little bit of an edge in this fight since it is daylight still. So we're going to be getting the best out of sneak attack criticals. Obviously there's, um, hang on, looks like there's rad roaches attacking ghouls. That's a really bad decision. They're going to get killed very easily. So what I'm going to do is wait until the rad roaches are dead so I can hit these guys efficiently with sneak attack criticals, hopefully. Yep, they're really piling into the showers. Maybe I should just step away from these guys. Yep, you just walk right on by. Nope, never mind. Well, it looks like we're gonna have a bunch of ghouls running at me. I didn't approach this situation to the, uh, like, the best I could, but we're gonna try to get ourselves out of it. It's weird how the submachine gun only fires at 75. I feel like it ought to fire faster because the Thompson submachine gun, I think it had a very high rate of fire. At least it's what all the movies and other video games taught me about the weapon, but so far, so good. We are in danger now, just slip back into caution, thanks to Escape Artist, at least for a second. And at this point, it's safe to say that we've got Adrenaline working to its full level. So, luckily we've got a nice um, amount of mag size just constantly spray. Although we are being a little bit swarmed right now, so if we just take a step back, there we go. We'll go ahead and crit spam a little bit, basically killing them instantly, which is good stuff. Got a little bit bruised and battered through that, but all in all, this fight has gone pretty smoothly, I suppose. Nothing I can't really recover from, and I haven't got, like, ghoul aids yet, so there we go. And still in danger, so whether, whether the Wendigo or the glowing dude has spawned, I'm not really sure. Be sure to mop up the rest of these guys. And you know what, I'll go over the loot this time, just for those who are interested. That's only a Reaver. You can die in one shot. Also, at Adrenaline 60%, we'll just have a check of this weapon's bad damage. There we go, we're hitting 100 with this thing. That's a little bit more respectable, but still, you can get close to that without Adrenaline with a handmade rifle. So, again, this thing probably isn't your best option for dealing damage, which um, means why the hell would you ever use this thing? It's one of the weapons that is mostly underutilized in this game. I imagine that not a lot of people would want to use this if it's you know, inferior to other weapons, but yeah, here you go. I think we're actually clear. Wherever those ghouls are, they're not showing up. Well, I didn't actually get anything out of all of those feral ghouls, but I picked up that earlier, so I'm gonna give that to the ice machine. Location number one, where to find a submachine gun of the 45 variety, is right here, Seneca Gang Camp, and that is where the top of the world is for reference, and there's Vault 76. You'll find it, on this chair, um, next to a dead raider guy. Location number two is at a place called Ingram Mansion, and it's not too far from the gang camp where we were before. So there's Vault 76 for reference, and what you want to do is jump in through the windows, and you want to head up there. So just get up through the back way, I suppose, and run right through here, ignore that guy, he's not important, and you'll find it on this fireplace here. Now, I've already looted this before, and the game won't spawn it to, for me for another couple of days, I think, so yeah, it'll be here, that's where you get it. Next location is at Fort Defiance, where a Wendigo is apparently, but we don't need to worry about him. All you need to do is just go to this particular floor of the joint, you'll notice a Tinker's Workbench there, you've got a Weapons one over there, and then you've got this boarded up elevator thing here. So you need to get yourself inside this area and you'll find it in there. Once open, just walk directly forward and you'll find it on this crate. There you go. Next up we're at Camden Park, down here in the Ash Heap standing just outside the Widowmaker. Don't forget to take these because that's a good way of getting yourself lots of ammunition. They contain lots of lead and lots of steel. You'll know when you're in the right place once you get to this center point. It's sort of inside what the roller coaster is and you'll find the submachine guns on a 
um, couch here next to some dudes who are dead. So there's usually two here, so double the chance of getting yourself something good. Um, if you happen to find any of these and scrap them to find a receiver, do let me know, because so far, the only receiver I could find was the prime one, and that was from killing a Scorch Beast, so I'm not actually sure how you get receivers. You might have to buy them, like, as a mod, which kind of sucks, but there you go, that's how you get them. Alrighty, night has fallen upon us, so I should have no trouble taking out Swan with enhanced sneak attack criticals. Well, we got him. Took more bullets than I thought, but we still got him. You know what time it is. It is time to make crab sticks. So this is what it's like aiming down sights. I've been hip firing for most of this video, but um, yeah, that's because ground pounder is so good. But um, if you aim down sights with this thing, you actually get a significant amount of zoom in. That's I I feel like that's much more than you get back in Fallout 4. So yeah, so you can extend your range out a little bit, even though it doesn't really work for this weapon because its range is somewhat limited. But it's good just to get that extra focusing shot if you need it. And more dudes down there. I was hitting him on the shell for a second, but it's, I sure as hell corrected myself. And now just to wake up old mate Queen. Get something loud and proud like a plasma grenade. There we go. And I've actually hurt her a little bit with that. So again, reminder, just we've got that 60% extra damage. And we're doing 100 damage a shot. Somewhat close to what, 350 damage now? with that extra bit, minus a little bit of a um, tough armor damage resistance there, so yeah, doing pretty well, despite it being a lackluster weapon back in Fallout 4, so not terribly um, disappointed by this weapon so far. Alrighty, so to adequately test this thing at range, I feel like taking on a Scorch Beast is a good idea because sometimes they like to fly away pretty far and uh, hopefully it's not going to be too bad. Alright, so I gotta get rid of you, because you're just going to mess up my stealth. And, okay, we are in danger now. Hopefully we get... Well, we don't... Are we doing double for nothing? No, we're not. That Scorch Beast is attacking something else. Well, since these guys have decided to do that, I'm just gonna take him out. And hopefully, we'll just run over here. Back in the caution, please. Yep, and there we go. More sneak attack criticals for me. I mean, I, he might be half aggroed by whatever's happening over there. We'll go ahead and try to crit spam him a little bit. Yeah, okay, at range, not doing as well. But we weren't getting sneak attack criticals there. And now I am out of ammo, so... Yep, that's all she wrote for this. I guess I'll have to finish her off with a explosive uh, combat shotgun. So if you could just land, that'd be good. I like how an explosive combat shotgun is a lot less um, easy to take down a Scorch Beast Queen with. I'll just get some Demolitions Expert perks on, and apparently she's healed by that. I don't like this game sometimes. Okay, now everything's broken. I'm gonna be right back. Okay, Prime Receiver comes off with lost 30 damage, but I definitely heard old mate Scorch Beast land. Fortunately, we've got plenty of uh, 45s to go around, so got to figure out where the bat went. That's just another Scorch dude. I guess I can fire this thing willy-nilly now. There's not like there's any shortage of ammunition to go around, but um, yeah, I'm not really sure what happened to that other Scorch Beast I was taking on. Oh, okay, yeah, he's over there. I counted three Scorch Beasts, so obviously one of them has already been killed. Go away. You two. Trying to take him out of range here, doesn't seem to be working too well. Uh, back into caution. I'm not getting the sneak attack criticals though. And you can see how much not having that extra little bit of damage is hurting us there. Thank you, game. Give me that stim pack. So if you could just get yourself unaggroed, that would be good. Hit you in the face. There we go. Had to wait until he's nice and close to actually do that. So what is this Scorch Beast doing over here? What is he taking on? Because if I can remove them from the equation... Oh, it's a legendary Colonel Gutsy. Yeah, okay. Alright, so he's flying over there. Oh, he's, he's aggroed with something else. What else is he taking on? I'm going to guess it's some super mutants, because they usually spawn in this particular area. Oh, he didn't stay on the ground for very long. Was he seriously attacking possums? Dude! 
Alright, let's take him on for reals this time. And he's landing. We'll pop a reload while we can. And then... Oh, I'll get taken out of that because my line of sight was blocked. I love when that happens. No, let's target his face. No, his face. Yeah, okay. Let's just go back into sneak mode. And I've just noticed that damage kick up right away. Whilst we're in caution, this thing is a lot better. Possum, you're aggroing the Scorch Beast. I didn't need that. Just die already. Thank you, game. Who was doing that? I've got so Oh, it's you! Oh, wait, no, you would have been on the Scorch Beast side, so it wasn't you, but you're going to die anyway. Okay, I think you get the point of this weapon. Oh, okay, I didn't realize you came in pairs. Back into caution, please. No? Try this. Alright. Gulpers, gulpers can actually see that they must have eyes. This is not a good place to be right now. I'm gonna get killed by gulpers here. Goddamn tanky bastards. Almost got him. Just, just gotta take him out. I guess it doesn't help that I, that half of my health is a radiation bar, but whatever. Anyways, so there you have it. The anti-armor submachine gun being a weapon that is unpredictable at worst and fairly decent at best, so it's not a terrible weapon, but there are better options out there, so honestly, I feel like this thing could use a buff, something to make it a little bit more on par, or somewhere around the 10mm submachine gun, because there's no real reason to use this thing at all, because 10mm you know, 10, 10 submachine guns are so much better. Got a better damage, got a better rate of fire, so I don't know what kind of... Um, niche this was supposed to fill on Bethesda's part, but I feel like this thing currently is not even worth using all that much, despite how cool it is. If you found a two-shot explosive variant of this, good, good on you, you can use that. You'll have no problems with that. But a standard one with basically no super enhanced legendaries on it, you're going to be struggling a little bit, so put this one aside, use something else. And I think that concludes a little video on this one, so yeah, thank you for watching, guys.